So hi and welcome everyone to the um, Building an Anti-Fragile Highly Scalable System to Assure Business Resilience presentation by uh, Ramya Murthy and Sai Subramanian. And yeah, we're glad you could join us today. And yeah, without further ado, over to you, Ramya. Good evening. Good morning, everybody. Glad to be part of this uh, India uh, Light version of the virtual conference. I would like to start with a thank you note to COVID. Thank you to COVID. Primarily because back-to-back uh, -back pandemic waves have actually created opportunity to create a lot of chaos engineering, chaos attacks on our, to test our personal resilience level, right? I'm sure everybody would agree that. And now stay tuned to hear from us, how do we build a resilient, highly scalable IT system that can help to assure business resilience? Let's get started with the session. Here's a quick outline. How do we want to plan the next 20 minutes for you? We will start with an introduction to set the context, to set the stage before we dive in to talk about how we made IT resilience a possibility for one of our global fintech customers. We'll start with what are the drivers for enterprise resilience? I'm sure everybody would agree IT forms the backbone and plays a vital role to enable businesses to meet the highest possible service level or recover application or infrastructure to quickly to prevent any data losses or revenue losses and not the least reduce the impact during unexpected disruptions. Having yeah, you, said wanna, that, you want to share your screen, sorry. It is already shared mode. Let me reshare it again for you. Is it, is it in the shade mode? Yeah, it's a uh... Shared now. Okay, sorry about that. So let me move on to the drivers where we stopped, we talked about the need for IT resilience, where this forms a backbone for any businesses to meet the highest service level demand, right? So now let's quickly jump in to look at what is IT resilience and what are the factors that are shaping up which are emphasizing on the need for IT resilience, right? So be it the expectations on having application always on, which especially post COVID, this, this expectation have become the de facto expectation from our end customers, right? Or be it the digitalization journey, the digitalization initiatives that, that we could see across the market, across the different business domains, where be it cloud adoption or architecture modernization initiatives at a scale, which we haven't seen this scale before, never before, right? Or look at the increase in the cost of hourly IT downtime, or I'm sure everybody would agree, we are used to see uh, the businesses making headlines every now and then, talking about the devastating disruptions leading to a large business uh, revenue losses, Cost, cost by IT outages. With this, we understand the importance of IT resilience and how IT resilience can help to meet, to enable business to uh, help to meet the business resilience is by making the system always available for my end customers, thereby increasing the user experience or fostering the revenue growth for a business or be it enhancing the brand value. So this is how the importance of IT resilience could be reflected on how it attributes or helps to achieve business resilience, okay? So now, why, why resilience matters in a nutshell? Obviously, resilience helps to increase my system availability, which is, which is the, 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 the million dollar expectation from every business now, right? Or it helps to reduce the IT outages to save businesses from business disruption, I, uh, devastating disruptions and help to reduce MTTR, the time to fix a problem, time to uh, repair and bring back to its normal state of working. How resilience can help us to validate our preparedness to make this happen to reduce the MTTR. And not the least, thereby helping to enhance the customer experience and build or enrich the trust and thereby helping businesses to build its brand, to maintain its brand value, right? With that context set on resilience, let me quickly spend that minute talking about how 
chaos engineering as a lever it helps to assure resilience more from looking at resilience engineering a broader view resilience engineering discipline it implements the best practices it brings the strategies for building a resilient and reliable application looking at a holistic view stating the end to end sdlc life cycle phases thinking about it proactively right from the inception phase is my architecture is my design thought through or built with the resilience design patterns or is my development team aware of the need for resilience be it at a testing be it at a release be it at a last the ship most the rightmost part of it how do we operate it so resilience engineering is the broader perspective of making the system resilient but not just missing the proactive management part of it but if you look at chaos engineering which is a subset within resilience engineering which focuses the only the testing part of it which is basically test observe the resilience mechanism that has been implemented understand whether it meets your expectation or start focusing on bringing improvement measures right so if you look at resilience engineering is a more proactive way of uh, looking at it from the inception phase whereas if you skip that just focusing on only bringing chaos engineering it will definitely help in a way i'm not saying it is not going to help you but the 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 rate at which you mature and move on to the the highest expectation will be not be possible if you just focus on bringing chaos engineering without having a very bigger holistic view of need for resilience engineering okay so now with that said now do do you, we all know so building a resilient application wasn't wasn't this challenging before and it is why is it increasingly becoming uh, complex and difficult now if we if we look back at the the market forces that are transforming the it landscape uh, we were used to monolithic architectures and on prem deployments but with cloud coming in with moving everything to cloud having highly distributed architectures the complexity has increased it has exponentially increased that's the right way to call it out, right so with that increase in the complexity now comes the challenge for the technical team how do i ensure fault tolerance characteristics are as expected the applications are built with fault tolerance capabilities validated by bringing the right chaos engineering principles to make this it resilience no more a dream make it a possibility okay so with that said i think we we have set the stage now let's quickly look into the case study so now the next 15 minutes we are going to engage you talking about how we were able to transform and build failure as a delivery culture for a wealth management platform that we developed uh, for a us based global fintech leader so we will be covering how we were able to achieve though we started it looks like a dream we how we will uh, how what are the best practices that has helped us to achieve 99.99% of high availability slo that we committed to our client for implement uh, in spite of implementing a very highly complicated distributed architecture with containerized technologies and this was made possible by holistic resilience engineering principles so here we go we will talk about the few topics that have been covered in this uh, uh, quick uh, may, uh, representation let me start with the engagement background to make you understand the problem statements or the pain points that we had at hand before we dive into the solutioning mode okay so now the scope of the engagement was legacy modernization so the client was running on a monolithic wealth management platform which was expected to be transformed to operate in a multi cloud a distributed architecture obviously using cloud native principles bringing microservices and containerization and what not with this coming uh, the expectation from customer was very high primarily because this application this platform had it had a variety of 100 plus applications running under this platform and this this platform was known to failures with a in, with a large number of incidents coming every day in day out and the, the the platform had a history of problems managing and sustaining the operations in production so because of that experience client was very particular about four key pain points so when we modernize the architecture and make it cloud ready 
how are you going to make this application make this platform fault tolerant enough to adapt or auto heal in if if in case there is a failure it could be at any level network infrastructure you you, you name it yes we, they had a bad experience about that failure in the past so that was an important pain point that we were very particular about addressing that the second with 300 odd microservices running how do i bring the ability to quickly nail down isolate a problem if there are any failures reported because there have been a history of problems in the past and with a distributed architecture implementation being the expected being being the uh, the implementation solution how do you make things work was an important pain point and obviously bringing a, a hybrid infrastructure deployment with multiple cloud or on prem infrastructures in place how do i bring an end to end visibility to connect the dots and see what could be the the failure at it from an end to end full stack perspective and last but not the least after i have my application ready how do i sustain and meet my commitment what i give to my customer and how do i how can i monitor whether am i overrunning the commitment or am i continuing to meet the expectations from the customer uh, thereby monitoring whether i am making my customer happy and day by day enhancing my customer experience so how do we all do this was a million dollar question uh, which had uh, been put forth by the client so for this background of the problem statement at hand, we proposed a resilience engineering as a delivery culture, which revolved around three key areas. Bringing shift left resilience engineering practices, bringing a full stack uh, continuous observability platform, which gives me a very good visibility on what happening internally to fix the problem, to do a root cause analysis quickly and make things work. The third aspect, bring a robust site reliability engineering practices in place where it helps me to stitch the dot from the right side and bringing the shift left resilience engineering focus proactively thinking about uh, developing the system and, and not just sustaining it helped us to bring a resilience engineering making it as a delivery culture okay so now just double clicking on these three aspects that we wanted to propose as part of our resilience engineering we created a resilience engineering coe which brought a lot of governance into the place and i mean it talked about the operating model the how the engagement journey would look like how do we transition to the different maturity level it is not that we will be able to operate at the expected high availability sla from the day one or on a month one but how do we lay out how do we plan how do we mature as we move on how do we bring shift left interventions bringing it as part of the pipeline of the pipeline or be it how do we bring sre mature bringing a lot of functions uh, under as we know sre is not one single function and it's not just about sla monitoring it revolves around multiple function areas to make effective performance and capacity to make it monitoring there are multiple functions service areas that sre covers right so how do we bring uh, SRE functions? How do we cover a governance layer as part of the COE? Not just looking at the, the, the connection points, but more diving into more looking at the people, process, and then the techniques aspects. The COE focuses on bringing a lot of focus on bringing methods, techniques, or processes, or be it the, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, for different category of application that was much more challenging than any other task because the the variety of applications we had was i, I we, we couldn't bucket us two categories or three we had a different variety of applications with a different scale i mean uh the the kind of business criticality or the the the, the strategies for test data uh, managing the test data or the the strategies around what kind of failure attacks is required were very vast and it was it was it was highly uh, uh, getting into different categories right so bringing a sop for each of the category to onboarding app of a particular category or how do we bring reusable how do we enhance uh, the engineering capabilities to bring reusable assets be it at a process level be it defining some methods or be it building automation scripts as part of the toil reduction activity 
bringing the right quality gains that is much more important because we all focus on the governance layer what it helped us we had uh, a governance team for the shift left part of it and then a governance for a layer for shift right this governance team actually did the good job of smartly balancing whether these two uh, teams are not operating in silos and they connect well with each other that was actually taken care by the governance layer and obviously covering the the tools aspect what ecosystem of tools to be in place to make observability a possibility was un, uh, one another activity which the coe function has to uh, uh, work upon and then make a conclusion and last when we look at the people perspective right so if you look at resilience engineering it is not just about looking bringing a performance engineering uh, focused uh, uh, team or bringing a chaos engineering folks or just a sari folks right so it was not just about bringing new set of roles to validate or to bring all uh, chaos um, engineering principles or sri principles but we have to define lot of collaboration protocols actually that was a much much bigger uh, uh, initiative that we need to focus on for a primary reason that resilience engineering as as we discussed it is not an independent siloed activity where we we see a holistic view connecting the dots with each other that is when the collaboration protocols we defined helped us to bring certain interventions how do we collaborate with the existing personas right so the personas were distributed throughout my sdlc and how do we make the resilience engineering coe team not just the governance or not just the bottom up team who are part of the scrum team to who make things work but in in nutshell how do we at a different layers how do we define collaboration protocols to interact with the existing personas and more than that how do we bring bring uh, skill transformations in in terms of the responsibilities the existing personas had because resilience engineering emphasizes not just bringing the new set of roles and responsibility but also requires skill transformation in the existing personas okay so yeah, that, just a quick time check just two more minutes left sure thanks sir so with that said we had not to be uh, taken for granted more than technical uh, uh, expectations of how do we bring process in place technical solution in place we had a much more bigger uh, uh, cultural challenges than what we envisioned than what we thought about right so primarily it revolves around making failure as a culture making bringing chaos as part of a bau was a bigger challenge we had at hand than the technical challenge so we we felt actually the people transformation be it bringing skill transformation activities or to bring the roles and responsibility changes in the existing personas and more than that bringing people out of the comfort zone to make them come out of the comfort zone to make failure to treat failure as a norm that was a really much more challenging task for us than the technical challenges what we have to uh, take up so with that said i think uh, i I, th i think we have set the room uh, set the context on how we approached and what was the problem before i hand it over to sai who will do a deep dive on how and what methodology did work for us to make this happen thank you ramya so what we understand now was resiliency is not just an afterthought right you know how do we build resilient applications by design and first time why and this is where we need a smart balancing of the shift right and shift left principles shift left principles uh, you know essentially evolves around building or you know bringing in the resiliency engineering practices as part of your application development life cycle uh, so if you look at the inception phase you know you look you define your nfr requirements as well as define the slas and slos uh, look from your production analytics you know production logs and find out what are all the critical business processes that needs to be tested for resilience uh, from an architecture and design standpoint you know we had our resilience engineering coe team you know closely collaborated with the enterprise it architect team to kind of review the architecture uh, you know find out uh, is there any single point of failures you know what is our uh, application redundancy strategy what's your uh, what's our data replication strategy and uh, you know can can there be you know uh, auto scaling that can be provisioned for um for handling un, uh, you know unexpected user traffic spikes and so on and from the early sprints and the hardening sprints you know we from an early sprint standpoint you know we did the early chaos engineering test with a limited blast radius 
uh, did the observability uh, portion as well, you know, by by correlating with the application business transactions. And from the hardening sprint, you know, we did our end-to-end -end performance engineering and uh, full-fledged chaos engineering test, right? You know, this is where we had high blast radius of of bringing down a pod or bringing down a VM and looking at, you know, how your application behave and take this as an input for our uh, performance environment capacity planning. Uh, quickly on the uh, shift, right? Um, you know, we had brought in the uh, site reliability engineers, you know, who kind of acted as a bridge between the operations and the engineering team, uh, balance the velocity of uh, the application feature releases versus your uh, uh, reliability aspect, and also monitor the key SLIs and SLOs, um, uh, you know, where we where we aim for the 99% uh, 0.99% uh, SLO uptime. Let's move on from here. So from a chaos engineering standpoint, you know, we, we approached it in three phases, right? But the first one was building the hypothesis where we looked at the current uh, uh, stable system, baseline the steady state behavior, and then we defined the SLIs for the hypothesis validation, right? Basically, uh, you know, how, do your, how, your ex how your system is expected to meet the SLIs when you run the chaos engineering test. And we also finalized our failure attacks and blast radius. Uh, failure attacks, if you look at, you know, we did it at four levels, the infrastructure, code level, network, as well as at the Kubernetes level. Um, blast radius, you know, we always recommend as a best practice to start with a low uh, low blast radius and kind of um, increase to a high blast radius as your system, uh, you know, hardens. And validate hypothesis is more on, you know, how doing the actual failure attacks on the target environments and monitoring via the observability platform. And remediate is comparing the system behavior, right? You know, your stable system behavior versus the uh, system behavior uh, during your course of uh, chaos injection and identify if there are any action items for remediation. You know, it could be increasing your infrastructure capacity or provisioning additional microservices containers, you know, take those learnings back to our build hypothesis phase and, you know, uh, rerun the cycle with, with a new hypothesis. Let's move on now. So tools and platforms. Um, so we we understand that you know uh, one say one tool does not fit all the uh, all the purpose, right? For example, we had siloed chaos engineering tools, we had APM infra monitoring tools, and we have log analytics tool. But with the complexity of the engagement, right? We we, we had about three thousand microservices uh, in a highly distributed architecture deployed on multi clouds. What we required was a unified platform. Right, which kind of, uh, if you can go to the next slide, uh, a unified platform which had the capability to carry out the various chaos engineering attacks, integrate them as part of our continuous delivery pipeline, and also a powerful observability platform which can not only do the infrastructure and application uh, business transaction monitoring, but also predict your capacity. Uh, for example, you know, looking at your historical infrastructure utilization data and kind of predict what is your likely infrastructure anomalies, right? Uh, which can drastically cut down your, you know, production incidents. And also, how can you correlate between your uh, infrastructure anomalies and your application logs? So these were some of the uh, uh, key components, you know, on the on the observability platform that we built, right? So this is our LTI's platform-led approach. If you look at, you know, there were three major components, the chaos engineering for injecting the attacks, uh, again, both on the on-prem as well as in the cloud, observability, both on the infra layer as well as on the uh, application business transactions layer, and predictive analytics for uh, predicting the uh, infrastructure anomalies and feeding this as an input for our production capacity planning. And these were integrated with our continuous integration pipelines and also the various other channels like Slack or Teams and so on. Uh, hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I yeah. uh, I think we're gonna have to stop the session soon. Yeah. So last last yeah. thirty seconds, uh, Monica. I think we are done. Yeah. Uh, from a benefit standpoint, um, yeah, we were able to cut down our uh, production incidents by over sixty percent, primarily because of our our you know predictive capabilities that we brought in using our AML platform. Uh, Ninety percent reduction in in our uh, mean time to detect and mean time to recover. Uh, primarily because of our correlation capabilities that we brought in, and as well as we were able to achieve 99.99 percent SLO, uh, where it led to zero business disruptions. You know, in fact, we didn't have any outages for the last 10 months in our application in production, and uh, and, and obviously improving our service availability and durability for a better user experience. Uh, 
So with this, we'll, uh, we are open for any questions. Yeah, so I just, yeah, I want to thank you, Ramya and Sai, so much for the session uh, and for sharing your experience with us. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, everyone.